As with a lot of sequels, Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals sticks with what works. The first Oxenfree became an instant favorite because it's a horror game about being on the edge, both literally and metaphorically. What is this thing? The sequel is also set in the Pacific Northwest and still has the same eye-catching style, but this time we're playing as an adult rather than a teen. That might not sound too different, and it's not really, nor is it as scary of a horror game as the original, but it's truly eye-opening how characters' experiences can change so drastically just by aging them up, and the conversations and relationships between them are what make these games work. I'm also just trying to remind myself that I too was once a dumb asshole teenager who did dumb asshole teenager things. I'm trying to. Maybe not succeeding, but trying. This adventure stars Riley and Jacob, two 30-somethings who need to figure out how to move forward into the next stage of their lives while battling the same ghosts. That was weird. I don't think we're alone. If that sounds familiar, that's because it is. Lost Signal carries over a lot of ideas from the original, in fact. The gameplay is similar, the watercolor-inspired art still does a lot to make it feel like a dream, and the audio design continues to be hard-hitting. It doesn't outdo the impact of the original, but it still finds its own way thanks to some subtle but impactful changes that come together for an emotional and surprising ride that could have easily been a lackluster rehash. Man, I was really hoping to avoid this, but uh, take a walk on the wild side, Jake. Oh God. Riley and Jacob are working overnight for an environmental research group that wants to place transmitters across Kamina, the coastal town where they grew up. This is, coincidentally, near Edwards Island, the old military and tourist location where the first game takes place. People who played the first game already know that there's nothing good over there, and thankfully Lost Signals doesn't devote too much time to re-explaining it. But I signed up for this partly because of how weird everything's been. The duo quickly comes up against the antagonists, if they can be called that. This is a group of teens from a mysterious religious group who are trying to reopen the portals from the first game. Their leader, Olivia, has motives that are readily apparent to those of us watching from the outside, which is frustrating since Riley and Jacob take way too long to realize what's happening. Thankfully, what is really going on with Olivia and her friends is the big reveal, not why they're doing it in the first place, so Lost Signals doesn't become too predictable. She did something! Riley and Jacob are, understandably, out of their depth, and not just in regard to the ghosts. They're your typical aimless millennials with generational baggage, at least at the start, but it's immediately apparent that they're fleshed out people. Do you believe in ghosts? Sure. Our actual point of view character is Riley, who's clearly holding back a lot of intense emotions. Much of the story hinges on the conversations these two have, and just like in the first game, you can satisfyingly control the vibes and direction of those talks. I came down here hoping to find you, hoping, hoping you would know. The same goes for the teens as well, who you can befriend and get on your side if you play your cards right. Every character here feels real thanks to Night School's trademark dialogue and some exceptional voice acting. Elizabeth Seda and Joe Bianco, who play Riley and Jacob, imbue their characters with a lot of personality, which certainly helps with making them seem like actual people. Hey, Jacob, you know what this thing is? Uh, the Mountain Spectre is a hallucination, visual phenomena. Thing. They're subdued with the proper amount of ums and pauses to make their conversations feel real. I've been talking my head off ever since we met. God. Okay. What's uh what brought you back? As Riley, you can choose to be open with Jacob or shut down his weird tangents. Your mileage will vary with how much you relate to the characters, but their conversations feel real enough that most people who would consider picking up a game like Oxenfree in the first place will probably find something relatable. Uh, what if you go up and since you're the less uh, athletically inclined, okay. I'll climb up some other way. It's super easy to project onto them even if you're not in your 30s. Both Oxenfree games create deep characters with relatable problems and trauma. Just like in the first one, Lost Signals uses time travel to tell stories of people who literally face their future and reckon with it. You are young, and life is long, and there is time to kill today. 
It's a great way to see what everybody's dealing with and to put perspective into the choices you make. Another thing both games have in common is that the crux of their storytelling is in their conversations. It's impossible to say how many different combinations there are or how many endings they amount to. There are at least three, and there could possibly be dozens of variations. We're stopping this. This has gone way too far. But there are so many ways to take interactions, which you use to build relationships, which in turn have a big impact on much larger events. If you don't forge bonds with Olivia's followers, for example, it can lead to negative consequences when confronting their leader. Charlie, take them down. You have your knife, right? Choices aren't good or bad in the traditional video game sense, so you aren't compelled to do anything except if you want to do multiple playthroughs. One playthrough took about eight hours, but if you're not looking for every secret, subsequent runs can be much shorter. And depending on your ending, you might want to immediately jump into another. Hitting a bittersweet ending is definitely a big motivation to try again. Hey, sorry. I thought I saw another way out over there, but... Also arm. Beyond the new set of characters, the developers made other changes to Oxenfree's template for the sequel, including a larger setting. This brings more places to explore, but it also creates more empty space that you have to fill. There are quite a few areas where you'll be walking through them and nothing will happen, or you have to backtrack over trails you've been across a few times already. But the devs were able to fill up this downtime with a new mountain climbing mechanic that leads you into new mysterious areas. It doesn't do a ton to change the actual gameplay up, but it's enough to make Kamina feel distinct from Edwards Island. As she scaled the heights with ability and grace, Riley Poverly wished Jacob would get his ass in gear and climb. Another big change is the walkie-talkie. The radio signal is a key motif in Oxenfree, so the walkie-talkie fits in well, but it also lets you talk to even more characters. There are nine channels with different people on them, and while most of them are optional, if you choose, you can reach out to a park ranger on channel one, a fisherman on channel five, or a high schooler running an advice radio show on channel eight. Hey, uh, DJ person, are you around over? Hey, how's it going? Need some more advice? You can even complete tasks for these new friends. Most of them don't have a huge impact on the story, but they give you more chances to engage in decision-making, and they explain what's happening in the wider world as the portals start to wreak more havoc. The same goes for the main story quest. You have to visit a few different peaks to plant the transmitters, and you can technically do them in any order. All right. Let's see if it does something. This means you may hit certain encounters out of what must have been the expected order, which means some events can happen before you even get there. It gives way more weight to your choices when even the smallest ones have immediate effects. Take that, you mask-wearing, moon-worshipping weirdos. If an area is particularly inaccessible, there's a chance you might get to take advantage of some portals through time. These dump you out into the past and allow you to do things like cross a bridge that might not be there anymore, or use a lift that's since collapsed. It's just a bit disappointing that this clever puzzle idea isn't used nearly enough, especially considering how much time the developers dedicate to teaching you how the time portals work. These barely tapped into puzzle ideas are a missed opportunity to add more to Lost Signals and separate it from its predecessor just a bit more. We have traveled through time. Uh, on any other day I'd be screaming, but instead... Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals doesn't do a lot that's new. It features a lot of the same gameplay, is set in a town right next to the first game, and doesn't do enough with some of its new puzzle ideas to really set it apart, which might make it feel a bit too familiar. However, just like in the last game, Night School brought over its penchant for great characters, dialogue, and impactful choices. Riley will be immensely relatable to anybody who's in their 30s and wondering what's coming next, and her and the rest of the characters come together to create an intimate but epic adventure that reacts to your decisions in interesting ways. It's the bonds you create along the way that carry you through to the possibly bitter end. The choice is yours. For more, check out our reviews of the original Oxenfree from 2016 and Harmony The Fall of Reverie. And for everything else, stick with IGN.